know when we get the bug? We're the fastest motherfucker here. If you thought they were fast on the snow, you haven't seen anything yet. And what a setting. It's our first trip to beautiful New England Dragway, about an hour north of Boston. This place is awesome. They've been burning rubber here since the 60s. Two classes to keep an eye on today. First off, Pro Stock 800. They're limited to 800 cc's. The other category to keep an eye on is Pro Mod. It's basically an unlimited run what you brung type category. Case in point, look at this near 500 horsepower turbocharged. Yes, I said turbocharged absolute beast. Now, I don't know if the conditions will be there today, but maybe, just maybe, if they hit the tune-up just right, we could see a run in the four-second zone. Drag sleds are nuts! Here's a big question I have for you guys. You live in Connecticut. That's a great area for snow, so I know this thing is out all winter, seeing plenty of action, but why do you convert it over to the asphalt? Why do you do that? We're addicted to the sport, so you need something to do in the summer. Why not put it on the asphalt? It's clean. There's always somewhere to race. Go to any track, anywhere you want. And for some of you, the big question is, hey, where are the tires on these things? <laughs> we got little tires, a few on the front skis, and then we put them inside the track. Oh, all right. That's it for tires. How tough is this, and what do you have to do to transition it over from the snow to the asphalt? Pretty much the track, the wheels with the skis. You put the skid in it, wheels on the skis for the asphalt. You could basically do it with a stock chassis also. How many hours does it take you to convert it? Converting a stock sled back and forth probably only take you a day. Four years young, Mr. Jim Hassan, not just any legend, I understand you are the first person to convert a sled from snow to asphalt. Tell me about that. Back in 1985, I was racing at a local track up in Maine, and they had a set of skis out of New Hampshire that were called turf skis. The dealers used them to move sleds around in the dealership. And I got a whole pair of them at a garage sale. I put them on my sled, I went up to Oxford Dragway. I says, hey, I'd like to make a pass down there. The track people looked at me like, I don't know, is this guy all right or what? So we made a pass down the track on a 1981 El Tigre. The sled ran a 8-1 at 78 miles an hour in the eighth mile. From then on, other people started getting involved in it. I've actually known Jim Hess since I was four. I looked up to him as a role model. Same with my dad and everybody else here. <laughs> There are so many hobbies, there are so many things you could be doing. How does a 20-year-old female get involved in drag sleds? Well, I have to thank my father for that. I've watched him for so many years and I told him and he's like, why don't you get in a junior dragster? I'm like, I just, the enclosed spaces just doesn't fit right with me. So I'm like, I want to go on a sled. So I've had my competition license before I had my actual driver's license to drive on the real road. You're racing against a lot of experience out here, mainly males. As a 20-year-old female, do they take you seriously? Yes, they do. Um, I'm actually kind of glad they include me on there in discussions and everything. And I'm kind of glad to be part of their family and their extended family. <laughs> Great story here, one of the top dogs in the Pro Stock 800 category, number one qualifier, Keith Cawley out of Chuckaroo Motorsports. Congratulations. i to ask you, what got you involved in this? How'd you get started? My family. Back in 1962, my grandfather started a snowmobile business and took off from there. You're ahead of everybody else, number one qualifier. What's the key to really nailing the tune-up and going fast on one of these naturally aspirated sleds? Traction and belt slip trying to manage it. On a motorcycle, you can weight the pegs, you can put a little body English on it. What can you do to make corrections on a sled? Because they're much heavier. So on a snowmobile, it's almost, think of it like a, kind of like a skid steer. When you put pressure down on your right foot, it's putting pressure down on the right rail. So in sense, that's gonna wanna drive you left, where if you put pressure down on the left side, it's gonna wanna drive you right. How do you like your chances to win this thing today? 
I like my chances, but anything can happen. What a final round. Congratulations. 541, 41. 571. Great job. How tight was that down there? It was pretty tight, actually. Man, and you've been on rails all weekend. What is the key to the success on this thing? Don't know. <laughs> well, he doesn't know, but it's working. I think both of you did a great job. Guys, let's hear it for you. Good job, guys. it pro mod final will we see a four second run they got the clocks off remember we're gonna have to go back and check the time slip he will be able to tell us i want to see a four Garbus. Did he run a four? I know he's pumped up. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. I know he's got some people that want to congratulate him. Your winner today in Pro Mod. What? How sweet it is. Brian, great job. Well, we wanted to know all day long, would we see a four second run? You've got the data. It was no time, no scoreboard out there. What'd you run? 486.8, 8, 139.75. Man, congratulations. What's it feel like to go four seconds on a drag sled? Oh, it's crazy. Nothing like beating the opponent in the final. Congratulations, man. You earned it. Your whole team was that awesome or what, guys? We told you. We'd show you a four-second run. This is wild. Thank you, guys. This is amped up. This is awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. And you know if there's anything, fast motorcycles or drag sleds, we're in Cycle Drag rolls on.